It's Friday, February the 9th. Shave my stuff off. I'll grow it back. Uh, we are to the point now where we're on the fuel system and then we can start this thing. So, okay, so this is what Greg brought me and he said this was for a Chevelle or something that he was gonna do. And so this deal here will easily, I gotta look and see and make sure that uh, this line that's the supply. Let's see, this one that's the supply is long enough to make sure that, you know, the pump sits all the way down at the bottom of the tank. Um, it's got a, re a revision for the return. And so I'm probably going to have him order just another one of these. That way the pump is the same. This is a wall, bro. I couldn't, I looked at this part number and I can't tell what pump this is. Um, GSS 242 is what I read, but when I put into uh, Amazon GSS 342 is what pops up. So I don't know, but this is a good pump. It's made in USA and I don't think there'll be an issue using that one in the back tank. So let me creep under here with the creeper and I'll show you um, what this little tank looks like. Uh, Ryan, my neighbor, he's got a plasma table and uh, he, he's able to cut things out, which is really cool. I feel, I feel uh, blessed to have a neighbor that has something like that. But I think what we're gonna do is I'm gonna see if he can make me a ring out of something that's either eighth inch or three sixteenths thick. And if I can't get this deal into where the factory um, gauge and all and the lines come out, if I can't get this in there, um, I'll seal those holes up and then we'll weld to the top of the tank. And I'll tap, I'll weld the thing that I can get Ryan to cut out and then I'll, I'll, I'll uh, tap all the holes so that way if uh, Greg ever needs to service this thing, you know, it'll bolt in and bolt out um, if he needs to change anything. And we may do that. I'd like to do that on a little tank and the big tank. The little tank, however, is a plastic tank. And so where that gets complicated is the fuel level needs to stay so that when he can see how much fuel's in there, but I'm gonna have to try and fish all of that into this thing as well. So we'll, we'll see um, how that plays out. All right, so this is a new tank that he got. It's in really good shape. It's brand new. It's got a drain, so I'll be able to drain the fuel out of it. But let me uh, let me get underneath here so I can show you some of the wiring stuff that's shaky. All right, so this is kind of like what I've been dealing with. Um, th these are the old wires here for the fuel pump. And, you know, there's nothing really around them. They're just kind of running, questionable grounds. Uh, they did a better job up there. I don't, I think that's stereo. I'm not sure. So at any rate, if you can see this cobbled up fuel line, I don't know what they were doing, but it's questionable at best. Um, that That's the fuel. That was the old power for the fuel. So I need to cut all those out and get those out. And then we get over here. Uh, they've mounted a Holly Red. This filter is just kind of chilling here. I think there's some bracket that Greg had that's supposed to hold this. But nonetheless... We're going to change the way that all this is. We're going to make it so it's a little bit more secure and serviceable. Uh, there's another fuel filter up there, which is coming from the rear tank. And this is the... So there was a holly red... And then that's the switching valve for the, but that's all low pressure stuff. And that stuff's not designed for anything high pressure. Somebody's got a, this, so this thing had two lines going up here. So when he switched between the tanks, um, there's two lines. So this is one, and then there's one that you've seen that's on the inside. Uh, we will get rid of that. We will get rid of that and we will have one fuel line that comes up here. So this thing had this Phytech uh, box. It's a good idea, I think, but it's not, it's a good idea, but I don't know if it's the best idea. Um, 
So at any rate, I think the way that we're gonna do this and try and tackle this is the better way to do it. I got the fuel regulator mounted last week. That way I can try and figure out what he's gonna need for fittings. And we're gonna do PTFE line. All the line that was on this, uh, you know, I, I don't think Greg drives this every day. I think it sits between event and event. And it had this old, let's see, you guys have seen this line before. So it had this old type of line, but you can see how it cracks. Once the ethanol gets to it, it gets really hard, the ethanol and the fuel. So we'll do PTFE that won't do that, no matter how much ethanol is in the fuel. So I can't really spread these arms out. Um, there's just no, this thing is already stubby, you know, this way. So there's nowhere really to grab it and kind of moves a little more than I'm comfortable. So this is the type of stuff I'm talking about. So this white wire went all the way up to the front and was grounded way up at the front. I need to get into the box and see what that is. I'm not sure what this white wire goes to. This wire also comes out of the same hole up there and it was wrapped around over here and just taped up. So I have no idea what that is or what it goes to. But we got the fuel drained out of that rear tank. So, we've got the tire pulled off, and what I'm going to do is start taking some of this stuff off so that I can drop this tank down. Um, there's a bunch of fuel lines, and I think that's the vent for the tank. But there's a bunch of stuff here, so I'm going to get this stuff all kind of undone, and then... Uh, We'll go from there and then we need to address this monstrosity of stuff. Didn't even catch the body. The washer is sucked in there.
you guys, my phone died, so uh, I didn't get any film of me actually pulling the tank down, but I did get the tank down, and I did have a conversation with Greg about the valve, and he just wants me to use the big tank. He doesn't even want me to worry about the small tank on the side, so we'll make sure that there's no fuel in that or that it can't leak out or, or whatever. Said he's not worried about that. He's never had to use it, and we'll just stick to the big tank. Um, looks like there's going to be plenty of room for me to get the hat in there. I googled that fuel pump, and that fuel pump I don't think is going to be enough. It only makes about 50 PSI, and this Holly needs 60, 55 to 60 PSI to run. So I have a 340 uh, aeromotive pump here. Um, we'll just use that instead of that one. It's a little bit bigger, but I think I'll be able to get uh, get it down inside like I need to get it down inside there. But I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go in for the day. It's getting cold and windy. And it's about uh, 4, 40, almost five o'clock. Uh, actually almost, almost four o'clock, I think. Uh, at any rate, I'll flip the camera around. I'll show you the fuel tank and um, I'll catch up with you tomorrow. We're gonna get, get some more work done on it tomorrow, Saturday. So there it is, quite, quite larger than the stock tank and once we get the uh once we get the hanger in here there's plenty of room for it to be in here and it'll go deep enough the sock will sit on the bottom no problem that's what it looks like underneath here uh, this hanger was just kicking my butt um it kind of was making it that tank goes goes in like this and comes out like that and this tank was hitting on this thing and just being a pain in the butt so hopefully i can get it back in there with no issues and then we'll run a pigtail over that'll plug in for the uh, fuel pump